Hello and a very warm welcome to episode 37 of the Green Bean Podcast. My name is Katie, this is Jack, and welcome. Welcome to my studio here in Devon in the southwest of England. Um, And welcome back. Um, It's been a while since I've recorded a podcast. Um, I don't quite know how that happened. Time just seems to have flown by. Um, My last episode in November went along with the launch of my fairy ring knitting pattern, um, after which I was very exhausted. Um, I had all good intentions to share an episode with you in December, and I did manage to record one for Patreon, um, but I didn't quite manage to get one together for YouTube. Um, And then I took January off as a break to rest and recover, and um, perhaps you might have noticed, make some changes here in my studio, um, which was lovely. It was really nice to um, take a proper step back. I didn't do any work. I took time off from social media as well. It was really nice just to have a proper break and some time away. Um, So I did spend most of the month changing the colour of the furniture in here. Um, If you remember it before, it was all the kind of pale, unfinished wood. It's just basic furniture from Ikea. And I spent most of my month off applying this furniture wax to it to make it this lovely dark colour. And I'm so pleased with how it's turned out. Um, There is still a little bit of work to do. You might notice that it's looking a bit tidier in here than usual. That's because I haven't moved all of my belongings and art and craft supplies back in. So things are still a little bit up in the air and chaotic, but that's kind of my normal. So we're getting used to it. Um, As well, during my month off, I took a week away with my partner and my little furry best friend here. We went to the seaside and had just incredibly, incredibly good weather for January. It was um, really beautiful. I mean, not warm, but warm for January. Pleasant, sunny, blue skies. Um, I was able to swim in the sea every day. We took beautiful walks along the coast. So all of the video, the um, the outdoor video that you'll see in this episode is from that trip that I took last month. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you as well. But without further ado, um, let's dive into the episode. I've got a bit of painting to share with you, some knitting and some spinning. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome back.
I struggled a little bit with deciding what to share in this episode in terms of drawing or painting because obviously I've just returned from a month off work in which I haven't done any drawing or painting which has been a really nice break but um, I do feel a little bit out of practice and out of routine um, and so I thought it might be a good opportunity to talk about practice and routine in terms of my drawing and painting practice and in terms of my creative work overall I've had a fairly tumultuous year behind the scenes some of which you might have picked up on through the podcast um, and especially if you're someone who watches the Patreon episodes as well um, but I haven't talked specifically about what's been going on and I'm a little bit nervous to do so um, but I don't think I continue can continue sharing honestly about my creative process here without talking about it. So um, I'm just going to go for it. I feel a bit vulnerable, but um, it was always my intention when making this podcast to be honest and open and real about my creative process. And I think I have felt somewhat inhibited over the last year or so by going through some um, challenges behind the scenes and not sharing them with you. Um, so without beating a rat the bush any further, um, let me share that I was diagnosed last year with ADHD, um, which was kind of a surprise. Um, but the more I learn about ADHD, the more I realise that all the signs and signals have been there for a very long time. Um, and the more surprising thing is that nobody ever picked up on it before. Um, so it's been quite a profound change for me in terms of how I understand how my brain works and certainly how it relates to my creative process. Um, if you've been watching my podcast for a while, you will know that I'm someone who always has more than one project on the go, somebody who has challenges from time to time with finishing things or keeping focused on things through to the end of them. And of course, I think it applies to my broad range of interests as well. I'm never going to be satisfied with just being an illustrator or just being a knitwear designer. Um, I want to be interested in all of those things. And in a way, I had always seen that as a weakness. Um, and I'm kind of in the process of shifting my perception and seeing that as rather than um, that dreaded phrase, jack of all trades, master of none, I'm feeling more like, no, it's really okay. And in, in my own best interest to embrace being into a wide range of things and shifting from one thing to the other and going with the flow of how my brain wants to work rather than trying to you know follow a path that doesn't quite work for me. Um, so what this means is that I've been doing a lot of kind of behind the scenes process thinking about how my my diverse creative endeavours fit together. Um, so this is maybe a lot of philosophy if you're new to the podcast. So I'll give you a bit of an introduction that I, I see there being like three parts to my work. Um, one of which is making podcasts, um, one of which is running my shop, selling my illustrated goodies, knitting patterns, that kind of thing. And the other part of which is um, more difficult to define, but um, like personal creative expression. So things like making zines and comics, which might ultimately end up being sold in my shop, but those aren't the reasons that I make them. And I realised that over the past couple of years, I've managed to do pretty well at making space for running my shop and keeping my podcast going at the expense of making comics, doing more kind of personal heart-centred creative work and I've been thinking a lot about how to integrate that a little bit more into my routine. Um, and I feel like I'm waffling and I'm <laughs> not sure of the destination. So I'm going to move on to showing you some painting while I continue to talk about this. Um, so the painting I'm working on is just something in my sketchbook. And I'm not someone who's ever had a sketchbook practice before. I've always really struggled with um, 
painting for what I saw as not really any reason. I always wanted to be working towards a product or a finished goal. So it's really only in the last year or so that I've picked up a sketchbook practice just for fun. Um, and it's really been helping with my gouache painting, which I think um, you might have seen a progression in that just in the last year or so. But I think it's also been really helpful in terms of just practicing creating things with no goal in mind or no expectation. Um, and what my brain wants to do, I'm very like black and white thinking or all or nothing. I think, right, okay, I'm gonna do one of these sketchbook pieces every single day or every day that I'm in my studio, I'm gonna start with a painting. And it's not always realistic because sometimes there are, you know, urgent emails that need to be attended to, or there are orders in the shop that need to be doing, or I want to get a podcast out. But um, I'm really juggling my routine and trying to figure out how I can make space for more creative time, like drawing and painting, which is, I don't know, I feel like it is the real creative centre of my work. Like if I'm, if I'm not drawing or painting, then I don't have um, content to make a podcast about. If I'm not drawing or painting, I don't have new products to sell in my shop. So this is really the most important thing. And it's the thing that gets most easily neglected. Um, and of course, the more I do it, the more I feel inspired and the more I want to do it. So I'm looking forward to, um, to working at trying to make a bit more space for that and figure out, figure out a routine that, um, that makes space for that to happen more often than it has done before. So yeah, another part of that is just filming what I'm doing. I think um, I, even though I've been doing the podcast for almost four years now, I still get a bit of performance anxiety, um, particularly around drawing and painting in front of the camera. So to get myself more comfortable and more used to it, I've just been switching the camera on whenever I'm whenever I'm painting. And that means I'm generating a large amount of footage of things that I never intend to share with anybody. But it does mean if I do something that I'm pleased with or I think is worth sharing, I also have caught that on camera as well. So it's, it's nice to be feeling a little bit less pressured and precious about the, um, the footage that I'm taking of drawing and painting. So that's a lot of chatting and um, I'm not quite sure what, what the goal is in mind of what I'm sharing here, but I just wanted to, um, yeah, just give you a bit more of an honest reflection of where I'm at with my drawing and painting at the moment. I'm really hoping that as this year unfolds, I'm going to be able to find, um, find some space in my schedule to do some more comics and more personal creative work. I have things that I want to say and things that I want to share um, that, that I don't ever get round to in my regular routine. So um, yeah, I'm going to keep talking about it this year, keep talking about how um, I'm kind of integrating this new knowledge and understanding of how my brain works with ADHD, with um, what I've learned over the years about my creative process and um, and juggling the the complexities of running an online shop and making podcasts alongside trying to do personal creative work as well. So um, yeah, thanks for bearing with me on that waffle. Um, the painting that you're seeing unfold is is just a thing that I did for fun. Um, as, as I did several times last year, I've been practicing painting with a timer. So this is one that I just did um, with a, a 20 minute timer to to see what would happen and um, I was quite pleased with how it turned out.
I did do a fair bit of knitting during my time away and before I share you what I'm currently working on I, I want to share one of my finished projects because it's one of the best things I've ever made and I'm really really pleased with it. Um, but before we get into that let me tell you the story. So on Christmas Eve last year I decided it was time for a haircut and um, you know it was getting a little bit long um, so I got the clippers out and did not notice what setting they were on and kind of went a bit bald, um, quite a lot shorter than I would normally choose to go um, and it was a bit of a shock. I was fine with it but um, it was a little bit cold and um, yeah it was a it was not what I was expecting so I decided that I needed some kind of head covering for warmth um, and to make me feel cute until my hair got back to a length I was more comfortable with. It's just about arrived there now. This is the um, the kind of length that I like it to be. Um, so I don't need this thing as much anymore but nonetheless it's super cute so I'm still getting a lot of wear out of it. So the pattern is from the book Moon and Turtle by Sachiko and Kiyomi Bergen from Pom Pom Publishing and it's called um, Lewski or Levski, I'm not sure if the pronunciation is L-E-W-S-K-Y um, and it's a hood without the ears, the ears are my own addition. So it's knitted um, in the round, you cast on at the bottom here, you do a folded hem which I love, I love a folded hem, um, you knit in the round up to the chin and then flat and then shape the top of the head and then you pick up and knit this um, kind of edging afterwards. There's a couple of holes in here for inserting a drawstring which I haven't got round to but I've been wearing it just fine without that. Um, and once I finished it I just felt like it needed ears. Um, it was cute as it was but I thought it could be more cute with ears um, so I just made these up. They're just um, little kind of squares of knitting with some decreases at the top um, and I did exactly the same number of stitches for um, the grey piece at the back and the pink piece at the front but I used finer yarn and smaller needles for the pink so when I mattress stitch them together the grey kind of envelopes the pink and makes the inside of an ear and then I just stitch them on. Um, what else can I tell you? The main yarn was uh, Ram Jam from Daughter of a Shepherd which you've heard me bang on about before. It is probably my desert island yarn my all time, one of my all time favourite yarns. It's a wool and spun um, yarn from all British wool that would otherwise have gone to waste. Um, so it's a, a mixed breed, uh, really kind of cosy, lovely, crunchy texture and it comes in five natural shades. So there's a white, there's a black and three greys in between. I think this is the middle of the three greys um, and it worked perfectly. My gauge was spot on. Um, which is good because I didn't do a swatch. Shh. Um, and that's all. I'm really happy with this project. I'm getting a lot of wear out of it. It saved me from cold head for a few weeks while my hair grew back in. Strongly recommended. Um, since finishing that I have cast on something new and if you've been watching the podcast for a long time you might have distant memories of this project in another form. I have cast on the Seer, The Cloak by lovely Maria of Ninja Chickens um, and now <laughs> the original version of this project was kind of a tale of woe. I cast it on um, and started hosting a knit along. I've not hosted a knit along before and I've not hosted one since because this was such a disaster. Um, I got to about this point with the project when I discovered evidence of moths in my yarn. I've lived through a moth infestation, I've lost huge amounts of um, possessions and soft furnishings and all kinds of things so I just wasn't taking the risk, I needed to get it out and throw it away and after all that work and all of that expense of losing that yarn I was really disappointed and devastated. 
and I couldn't find another yarn that I wanted to use for this project other than beautiful, wonderful, lovely Brooklyn Tweed in this specific shade of green. And Brooklyn Tweed is not an affordable yarn. Um, and, you know, I, I do spend a fair amount of money on yarn, that much is obvious, but even so, the amount of yarn needed to make a full length cloak at the price of Brooklyn Tweed was making me kind of um, feel strange. So I just put it off and put it off for about three years. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I couldn't find any other yarn that I loved as much as this colour. Um, I also love the kind of cotton woolish texture of Brooklyn Tweed. It's very light and airy. Um, I knew it had to be that, so I just had to steal myself and save up. Um, so yeah, when I when I did finally make the decision to order it, it felt like such a huge treat. And it's really nice to cast on a project that feels so special and so much of a treat. So I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I cast it on a couple of weeks ago and I've made a fair amount of progress. It's it's an ugly jellyfish stage because it's probably time for me to change up to a larger circular needle. But if I smush it all around to the back of it, you can probably at least see the front of the cloak if it's not fully camouflaged against my green outfit on my green chair. Um, so it has these panels of, um, I would call it moss stitch, but I think uh, it's called seed stitch because Maria's American. Um, these two cable panels and then what's going to happen once I get to the bottom of the cloak there'll be a lovely band of colour work. It's going to be a few months before I get there let's be honest and there's no guarantees that I'm not going to cast on 15 other projects between now and then but for now this is actually the only thing I'm working on and I'm making pretty steady progress with it. Um, so yeah it's nice to have re revived the idea of this project and um, it's also a lovely kind of tempo of a project. It's nice to have something that has um, a cable panel, so a little bit of interest, but also lots of plain stock in it. So it's it's on that edge between sort of relaxing TV knitting and get your teeth into it knitting. It kind of covers both bases um, and I'm really enjoying it so far. So I'll keep you posted on how that's going or which 15 projects I cast on um, before this one gets finished. Who knows? Could be both.
Now, you might have clocked at the beginning of this episode me mentioning that there was going to be a spinning segment. And if you uh, have keen eyes, you might have spotted a new bit of equipment in the studio up here. And um, this is the other thing that has happened during my month away from my normal routine is that I have gone from being somebody who could spin to being a spinner with a capital S. Um, and the thing that has made that change is my um, purchase of the e-spinner, um, which some of you might recognise or guess where it's come from. Um, I think it was maybe a couple of years ago now, maybe even more, I was taught to spin using a drop spindle by my friend Bex, who has the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast. Um, there is a video of Bex teaching me how to spin, which was a lot of fun. And I spun kind of on and off here and there using my Turkish spindles and enjoyed it well enough. But um, it never really clicked as a craft that I was going to continue doing, I think because of the really slow pace. So I wasn't seeing the outcome of my spinning at any point. I'd spent like over a year spending 100 grams of fibre. And, you know, that's not to say that it would always take that long. It's not to say that there's anything wrong with it taking that long. It's just for me to keep my interest in the craft, I needed things to progress a little bit more quickly. Um, so when Bex mentioned that she was changing, um, to upgrading to a different model of the mini spinner, I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe I could give that a new home. And I was really happy to adopt it uh, towards the end of last year and spend some time getting to grips with it. So I've got my um, little collection of handspun to share with you. There's three things here. So the first thing is this one. This was the first 100 gram skein I ever spun. Um, and I spun it on the mini spinner. It's from a, uh, like a one-off limited edition fiber from John Alban Textiles. So, um, I think it's one they released for Wonderwall Wales in 2020. Um, I don't know very much about it. I can't remember the fibre blend. Obviously, being from John Arban, it's um, worsted tops. So um, very kind of fine combed fibre in... Um, I don't know the words. This is, <laughs> this is something I'm going to have to work on. If I'm going to get into spinning, I'm going to need to learn the vocabulary. Anyway, beautiful, soft, prepared fibre that I spun. Um, and it spun really very easily. There wasn't a lot of work. It was very straightforward and it was a great opportunity to get to grips with the spinner, um, get to know what I'm doing. As a result, it's kind of patchy in places. It's a bit thick and thin. There's some slubby bits. But as a first skein, I'm really, really, really happy with it. Um, and it was so satisfying to, um, to just finish a thing and see that I'd made some actual yarn. Um, so satisfying indeed that I decided to uh, ply up the yarn from my Turkish spindle that I spent the last 18 months spinning as well. So this is a Shetland and Merino blend from, um, I think it's from a Hilltop Cloud club that somebody in my knitting group had um, in their stash and wasn't going to use it because they didn't like the colour. For some reason, they thought I might like the colour. Um, I think it was a good choice. So I spun up this. I didn't, as you can see, it's not the same size as this one. I didn't even finish the, um, the 100 grams of it that I had. I think possibly I might finish the remainder of it on the e-spinner because, you know, much as I was enjoying the spindle, it was just too slow for me. And then finally, my most recent finished skein is this one, which I'm exceedingly proud of. I think the kind of progression that I can see from skein one to skein two on the mini spinner is um, is really satisfying. So this is a, um, a fibre from Cat and Sparrow. Um, it's 100% white-faced woodland, which isn't a breed that I've worked with either spinning or knitting, uh, but I have met some white-faced woodland sheep in person. Um, they're a rare breed. So it was really nice to work with something um, with a little bit more tooth and stickiness to it. I really enjoyed working with the fibre. 
Um, and I actually had 200 grams of this fibre, so I've only spun up 100 grams. Um, and what I was trying to do, because it was a hand dyed braid, I was trying to blend the colours as much as possible to get a kind of tweedy, heathered yarn where um, all of the colours are evenly mixed in rather than patches of different colours. I'm tempted with the second 100 grams to try and do something completely different and have a go at making something self-striping, but I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet. Um, and as you can see, there's a certain colour theme to all of the yarns that I've spun so far, and, you know, a certain colour theme to the fibres that I have in my stash as well. So I think what I'm going to work towards is using these in some kind of um, blanket in all different shades of green, because it would be really nice um, to knit with them. As I like, a lot of my spinning friends have suggested that I keep hold of my early skeins as like a, a reference and a memory, something to look back on after years of spinning. And I think I might do that just like keep 20 grams or so of each one as, as a record, but it would be nice to use the rest of them in a project. So that's what I'm working towards. And right now on the spinner, I've got um, some more green fibre, <laughs> surprise, surprise, um, from John Arban Textiles. And it's a colour that I designed, actually. It's part of their Apple Door range. Um, the official name is Spicy Pippin, but I originally designed it as an open weekend special last year or the year before. I don't even know what year it is anymore. 2021 20, and 22 have become so confused in my mind. Um, so it might have been last year, it might have been the year before, but I got to design a shade of Appledore um, and called it Mossy Bog. So it's since evolved to become Spicy Pippin, but it's the same um, blend of yellows and greens and greys. And um, I think it's going to make an excellent addition to my handspun blanket. So um, that's what I'm working on for now.
Thank you so much for joining me and this very sleepy puppy for another episode of the Green Bean Podcast. Um, it's been great to be back and I hope you've enjoyed um, a bit of a view of the countryside and um, hearing about what creative projects I've had going on as well. Now it occurs to me um, that with my next episode, which is going to come in a month or so, I'm going to have been making podcasts for four years and in some ways it feels as though I've been making podcasts forever, in a good way. Um, it's come to feel comfortable and a natural part of my creative process. And in another way, it feels like I can't believe it's been four years already. It still feels like a new thing that I'm doing. Um, but both in you know in both cases reaching four years is an amazing achievement i feel really proud of myself for um well for the videos that i make here i put a lot of effort into them and um, i feel really proud of that work but i'm also really proud that i've kept doing it consistently for such a long period of time there's um there's something to be proud of in there as well so I was thinking about how I might like to celebrate um, without putting loads of extra pressure on myself to do something super special or too much extra work because I'm I'm mindful that um, as important as this project, this, this podcast is to my work, it's only a part of the work that I do. So I don't want to um, give myself a special celebration project that was going to take up too much extra time and energy. However, I did want to do something special. And the idea that came to mind was to do a Q&A episode. That's not something I've ever done here on YouTube before. I've only ever done it for Patreon. So I thought I would open up the opportunity to do a um, Ask Me Anything. And that's not to say that I'm going to be able to answer every single question that I might receive or even prepared to answer every single question that I might receive, just putting that disclaimer out there. Um, but certainly I will do my best um, to answer appropriate questions and as many of them as I can. So if you have something that you've always wanted to ask, feel free to pop it in a comment below or a message to me. Um, and I will do a Q&A episode as well as the next episode to go along with my four years of podcasting celebrations. Um, yeah, can't believe we've got there. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, that's all for this episode. If you would like to catch me between now and the next episode, as always, you can find me on Patreon. Um, supporting me on Patreon is what keeps the podcast going. I couldn't do it without the financial input of my patrons and you do get access to um, vlogs and extra podcast episodes over there as well. So there's bonuses for you to joining up to. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Katie Greenbean and I have a newsletter and the link to sign up for that is in the description box down below. So thank you so much for watching and um, see you next time. Take care. Bye.